Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics and today we're taking a look at this good old Merlin Shering Master Packed 16N1. It is a 1600 amp circuit breaker, manually pumped, also with a motor loader. So I think we are going to have some fun with this. And? What? <laughs> Make a quite a jump on the workbench here when we try to switch it on. As you can see, right when I get it here, it says charged, so the spring is right now charged and it is off. So with the undervolted control or undervolted circuit powered up, we should be able to switch it in by simply pressing the on button. So before getting ahead of ourselves, we need some coffee. When I picked this up, I was unfortunately only on my bicycle and it was a yeah, chance. Do you want to get it or do you not? So I had to bring it home on my bicycle. So yeah, that was quite a ride taking that home two kilometers. So we're going to uh, take it apart, check out uh, the design inside and then we're going to see if it works. And then maybe in some future videos do some actually high voltage short circuit tests, maybe some high speed uh, video filming of it. So yeah, let's just have some fun. Whoa! At the front page here we have the product name. We can also see it's tested up to 1000 volt AC, but normally 380 to 690 volt AC. So that at 1600 amps makes this up around one megawatt of switching capability, which is insane. Manually charged, as I said before, with this handle. We also have a uh, short circuit curve limiting feature over here. With three potentiometers, you can set the different timings of the curve as it should be switching out on, and you can also yeah, reset that. Now, something that is rated for 1600 amps also has to have some pretty nice, huge terminals. So, what we have here is something like... 8 centimeters times 1, so 80 square millimeter thick copper terminals here at the back. Three of them as it's a three-phased unit. The entire front here can be taken off to reveal the electronics and mechanics inside. As it is charged right now, I do not want to put my fingers into this whole mechanism, which is the don't even think oh, down here we can see the charged spring so we'll take a look at that afterwards but all that we can see that over here at the charge handle we have a large gear as it is a very hot loaded spring we also have a small motor so this can be motor charged seems to have some uh, water damage on the pcb here hopefully that is okay we have a terminal plug over here that connects down to the release spring or release mechanism and also have a under voltage mechanism so we have to power the under voltage mechanism in order to switch it on and we can also remote trigger it with this release um, coil here wow look at that spring it is some uh, 50 millimeters and in its compressed state it is down to some 60 millimeters and i think it will extend yeah, well, so maybe 10, 10, 12 centimeters that this whole arm assembly here will get all the way up to around here. So that is a serious amount of kinetic energy stored in that spring. At the top, we have the three arc chimneys, and this is simply a arc extinguisher device, which is just a a lot of uh, metal plates to take the heat out of a yeah, switching arc or short circuit fault current. Here we're looking straight down into the switching chamber. Over here we have the moving arm. We can see it consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parallel couple levers, which have some switching elements sitting down here. And we can also see the output terminal directly over here getting hit. But it does have a wear surface, just a one to two millimeter thick plate here. And that is seriously dented. All these black marks are dents going into it from the switching element over here. We can also see arc damage 
seeing as uh, we have rust forming here, that the metal itself has simply been damaged by the hot air when switching this in. Okay, so I have only hooked up the under voltage release coil. I can switch that on here and with that switch on to 230 volt AC, we should be able to switch it in. I did not uh, hook up the motor because that's rated for 380 volt AC, so I would have to get that from my big plugs here. So yeah, let's try to turn on the under voltage release coil. Something clicked, something clicked again. Okay, let's try once again. This time I have the under voltage coil and also a closing release coil hooked up. So we will switch it on first the under voltage coil, then close release. So let's see how that goes. It does make some clicking sounds. <laughs> okay, so apparently we have this small circuit here which sets a time and this is the time between we have to engage the under voltage coil and the release coil and then it automatically tried to switch in and then tried to uh, switch off again. Perhaps internal fault, missing uh, mains voltage, I'm not sure of that. It's very hard to find a manual for this old unit here. So I actually am using some newer uh, manuals here for some much newer products but it seems to have the same uh, terminal designations so i could at least get it to work but uh, i want to hear this without the uh, ear defenders on so let's try that again and well <laughs> and nothing happens mm. That might be because I have to charge it again. So let's do that. Ah. Oh. And just like that, it's cranked and charged again. So let's try to turn it on. Whoa, <laughs> that is a serious kick. This is awesome! I'm going to do some high-speed photography of this, where we try to switch uh, off 4 kilojoules of uh, capacitor uh, energy into something and then maybe do some high-speed filming down into the spark uh, arrestor area. This is going to be awesome. So, until next time, see ya!